All right. I mean, listen, uh, it's just fun. If nothing else is fun. It's about the possibility of the thing, Michael. Just like romance. Oh, there you go. Just like Darius. The, you know, I mean, come on. You, you know, you know, Darius Love Hall. It, it's, it's, it Darius Love thing. Hall. Romance is about the possibility of the thing. Odell to L.A. is about the possibility of the thing. It's just exciting. Makes for good fodder. Good conversation. Let's continue that conversation with our guy David Gardner, uh, making his second appearance. He was so on fire last time. We couldn't wait to get him back. Um, and we were talking about it a little bit during the break, man. Um, you think we, we're overlooking last year's Super Bowl champion, the Bucks, uh, as the best team that money could buy winning it all? I'm just saying, if you look at what they did, they stacked it up clearly to have a two-year window where they were going to be able to compete for a Super Bowl while they had Tom Brady and while his arm was still attached to his body. They went and brought in Gronk, his best friend and his best target in New England. And then, of course, they got Antonio Brown. I think, actually, he's probably Fortnite. the best yeah. analogy towards Odell Beckham Jr. Well, yeah, and that's the thing about Beckham. Uh, Mike, Michael and I, you know, he won't, he won't call him washed. But he strongly implies that he's washed. But but even if he's not one-handed Sunday Night Football Odell anymore, for me, I, I look at it as this is an opportunity for him to rehabilitate his reputation. Because as much as there are some people who want to put it on, Be on on Baker Mayfield in Cleveland, or just say it wasn't a good fit, the way it all went down with his dad posting the the, the YouTube video or reposting the YouTube video. <laughs> with some of the things that have come out from anonymous sources uh, about Odell fitting into the structure of the offense or what have you. Um, it feels like this is an opportunity for Odell just to reestablish himself as somebody that's worth investment on the open market. So even if he doesn't ball out, so to speak, the rest of the season, to me, as long as he's quote unquote, the good soldier on a winning team, I think he wins. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's totally right. I mean, I don't think that you're going to see this guy step in and be the number one target. Then again, I probably would have said that same thing about Antonio Brown, and he didn't really miss a step when he came back in. Obviously, those are two totally different situations with Antonio Brown dealing with some very terrible off, off the field kind of stuff, and Odell's being right. more about you know his relationship. And he with had his the history with Tom Brady too. And of course, and, and yeah. So they had, had that relationship. Brady, yeah. 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 Although you look at Matt Stafford and you say that's a guy who really knows how to treat. Uh, marquee wide receiver he dealt with calvin johnson on losing teams for all those years he can throw guys open he can do things like that and he's playing really well for the rams right now and the pressure's off odell he doesn't have to be that number one target they've got two amazing exactly. wide receivers on that team if he comes in and gets 60 70 yards a game i think that's an amazing win for the rams who by the way already beat the bucks Okay, I'm gonna tell you both why I don't like your comparisons. Okay, I'm saying, you know, I feel like we gotta be honest and open in this relationship, right? So this is why I, don't I like love it. honesty. So right, so Antonio Brown, his his he was self-destructive. Nobody said he can't play anymore. He's self-destructive. You know, the whole grandma, I'm free from the Raiders thing, and then running around in his yard. But we knew he could play. Mm. And then when he left, mm. when he left the Patriots, it was off the field. Nobody said he couldn't play. Randy Moss okay. told you why he wasn't playing well. He told you, I don't want to. <laughs> he like, nobody said, I can't. He didn't say, I can't play. The year before that, he had eight touchdowns, eight touchdown receptions. Then he, his final year uh, with the Raiders, he had three. And then he wanted to play again. But Odell Beckham Jr., mm, is that why he's not playing well? Because he doesn't want to. He also had a, ba a major injury. It's, it's hard to compare him to those Hall of Fame receivers because I think there may be something deeper here that we're all just willing to gloss over. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, it's not a one to one comparison in any of these kinds of situations. My rule that I always use if, is if I've seen a guy play at such a high level, like I've seen Odell play that I believe he's going to do it again until I'm actually 100% certain that he's not going to like Five years from now, when LeBron James is coming off the bench and only hitting threes on his son's team that he's playing with in the NBA, I'll still be like, I think he's still got an MVP season in him. I think he's still got one left. I know uh, you have. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead, because we're going the same place. Go ahead. I know where you're going. We're going I, the same place. Go ahead. I, I know. I know you've profiled Aaron Rodgers in the past, I believe. Uh, and so we'll see Odell make his debut Monday night. Sunday, we see Rodgers presumably make his return against Russell Wilson who's making his return. We're a week out from the infamous appearance on the Pat McAfee show. It's been a week and a half uh, since everybody 
uh, learned that immunized did not mean vaccinated. Um, not that the dust has settled, David. Can you put into perspective and context what we've seen over the last uh, nine, 10 days and what it means for Aaron Rodgers moving forward, if anything, maybe his reputation and his legacy, maybe this is a blip on a, a blip uh, or a speed bump. Maybe it's nothing or will this have uh, a lasting impact on how we view Rodgers? Yeah, well, you know, it's 10 days since most of the world find out. But of course, you know, viewers of this fine program knew a long time ago what Aaron Rodgers <laughs> oh, was up to. Nice. <laughs> I hope you're still Cadillacing on that one, Mike, because you saw it through <laughs> okay. the nonsense well before anybody else did. You know, it's hard to say what is going to happen reputationally to someone because I do think that Aaron Rodgers has a lot of goodwill. Certainly, he has a ton of goodwill in Green Bay built up over the years. And sometimes we dismiss these people as sort of just being kooky athletes like we don't expect them to be experts in all areas I think the mistake that he made of course was just lying in the first place or deceiving people if you want to you know be a little bit gentler towards him I'm very comfortable with using the term lie because he definitely lied but I think that if you look at it what he did was set himself up for failure he thought he could get away with it throughout the whole season and he turned out not to be the smartest guy in the room which was the image that he was trying to project for himself so I think ultimately though with most athletes as long as you're not doing something really troubling off the field interpersonally as it relates to other people, I think that you can pretty much rehabilitate your image via winning. Although I think that his reputation as a, you know, as a thoughtful guy, as a really intelligent guy probably took a hit uh, that it may not recover from. Well, I mean, if you're talking about okay. taking, go ahead. No, no, if you're talking about taking, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, if you're talking about taking medical advice from the backup host of the man show and wanting to be taken seriously, it just it doesn't hold water with me. Well, well uh, but uh, just listen, just the truth is, is that's for us. That's for people who think like us. On the flip side, that's kind of as my own question. He probably made a lot of fans in the process of this, too. Yeah, uh, he probably sure. you know, reestablished himself yeah. in some circles. There's a lot of people who identify who identify with him and think that this was exactly what he said it was going to be or said it was on last Friday, which is that this is just one big witch hunt, Michael Holland. Yeah, and, and I, David, I, I just want to get your take on this, you know, away from what Aaron Rodgers said on the Pat McAfee show, missed last week's game. The Packers look like a different team, clearly, without him. So their seven-game winning streak comes to a close. Now, do we just drop back in? Do you just drop Aaron Rodgers back into the, the starting spot and – watch the Packers start a, another winning streak and all the way to the conference championship game again for the third straight year. Is that, is that how it's going to go? I mean, if you look at the way the Packers are built, certainly that defense looks really intimidating, looks really strong, held them in that game against the Chiefs, even against Patrick Mahomes, who is another one of those guys. I'd have to watch him play six bad seasons in a row before I stop believing in Patrick <laughs> Mahomes being an MVP caliber player. I think that Aaron Rodgers gets back in there. And, you know, they had some problems beforehand. The passing game wasn't really working that well a couple of weeks before that. And they were relying on the running game in ways that you really haven't seen with Green Bay so far. But I think ultimately, of course, when you're you're talking about what happened last week. You see defenses blitzing against a rookie quarterback, not a rookie, sorry, but a first time quarterback in Jordan Love getting his first big start. Aaron Rodgers would have picked that defense apart if that's what they tried to do against him. And I think ultimately, you know, he's an amazing NFL player, maybe the best thrower of the football I've ever seen play in the NFL. And I think he's going to get them back into the playoffs, of course. And then, I mean, the NFC is just so loaded right now that it's really hard to predict if he's going to get to a conference championship at this point. I'm really excited to see it. There's so much parity in that conference right now. Absolutely. Hey, David Gunner, uh, if you're not already following him on Twitter and social media, make sure you follow him and check out his uh, amazing writing in The Ringer, The New York Times many other places as well. We're just glad to have you part of our family, man. Thanks so much for falling through and kicking it with us. Yeah, happy to be here anytime, guys. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.